My name is Sadie Parnell, and I grew up. I was born in Marble City, Oklahoma, and I grew up with my sister and my grandfather. My mother passed away when I was born, and my older sister and I stayed with our grandfather. My middle sister went with another family. My dad's name is James Fields. My mother's name was uh, Pearl Goins. What was your grandfather's name? John Morris. What was it like living in Marble City? <laughs> I thought it was nice. It's the only city I knew. <laughs> right on the creek. <laughs> we used to play Annie over, my sister and I. We lived in a house that didn't have too high roof, you know. And I remember one time uh, we were playing Annie over and she fell. And there was a peach seed. And she cut her arm, really, her elbow really, really bad on that peach seed. I never forgot that. She got an, she had an awful scar. We played in the creek. We lived right close to a creek. And <laughs> back then, you, you went swimming, you didn't have any clothes on. You're just a little kid, you know. <laughs> we had rag dolls. We made rag dolls. And made dolls and horses out of uh, corn stalks. Every now and then, there'd be a catalog that would show up, you know, and we'd cut paper dolls out of the catalog, and play paper dolls. We went fishing a lot. We ate crawdads a lot. We dug wild onions a lot. We just, we got poke. I mean, you know. You just lived you off did, the land. You, yeah, you lived off the land. You were lucky if you had, a, had any meat. But uh, Grandpa hunt squirrels, rabbits, stuff like that. You know, we'd get a little meat. We had a we he had a pig one time, and uh, it was a pet. Oh, he killed that pig, and my sister and I just oh, we just went ballistic. <laughs> but we ate it. It was meat. It was meat on the table. Played with it all the time. Rub the side of its belly and it lay down, <laughs> you know. Now, did you name it? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Grandpa uh, raised cotton. And uh, we'd take a load of cotton to the cotton gin in, in, in Marble City. Yeah, we'd load up a load of cotton. Great big canvas sack. Uh -huh. Great, maybe eight foot or 10 foot long. And then you go down the row and pick cotton, you know, and put it in the sack. And it filters down to the, you, and then, and when the, and then when it gets it full, he brings it in and he weighs it. Weighs it on old fashioned scales. I remember one of the things that we had was molasses. He always bought molasses, you know, yeah. Oh, we always had molasses. We decided to make candy. And we had a wood cook stove. Mm -hmm. And Grandpa was gone. So we built a fire and that stove and decided to make candy with all that syrup, you know. Ooh, we heard a wagon coming. <laughs> yeah, we heard this wagon coming. Oh, we cleaned everything up right quick, too. So we finally ate what we had made, supposedly candy. It was mostly syrup, you know. We stayed there till uh, Indian agent came by and saw us and told Grandpa about the school. It's a quiet. So that fall, we got loaded up in the wagon and parked down there at the Y, the whole area down here at the Y was full of wagons and buggies, horses, mules. And early the next, the next morning, everybody went to the administration building to be uh, enrolled in school. I'll never forget my first day of school. I cried the whole first period. I got a whipping. I wouldn't quit crying. Oh, and I was riding in front of the teacher, I front row. My sister sat right behind me. 
and she kept punching me in the back, wanting me to shut up. But I couldn't shut up. And lunchtime, I ran across the campus. I told Grandpa, I said, I don't want to stay here. Take me home. And he kept saying, well, this is the best place for you. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm having a hard I, You know, this was during the Depression. I can understand that, you know. And uh, so he decided to just leave us at school. Did he ever come to visit? Yeah. He had to walk from behind Marble City. And he'd spend all night, he'd spend the night at Cookson. And then he'd walk out here. I never realized, but I think he was past 80, you know. And the school was nice enough, the boys' building, mm -hmm. they would let him spend the night in one of the dormitories. Now, how was that when he showed up for a visit? Well, we just got to visit when we weren't in school, right. you know. Just for a little while, we got to eat with him at the dining room. What is it, 12 miles to Cookson? Like that, yeah. And then the Marble City was still further down. So he, um, it took him two days to walk to school. We were detailed to do different things there. You either worked in the girls' building or you worked in the dining room. And nine times out of 10, I was in the dining room and the kitchen. This was during the Depression. And uh, every time you turned around, you had cornbread on the table. To this day, you will never catch me eating cornbread, ever, period. Mm-mm. Well, that's the only home I knew, you know. And we stayed there all year. The kids okay. go home for summer. Summer, we had no place to go. Grandpa passed away. Every once in a while, they'd bring us to town. And, then, and in the, as I said, we stayed there all summer, and then they'd load us a bus and take us to the river to go swimming. And then we'd have watermelon feasts at the school. Well, we played tennis a lot. We played uh, softball. We played soccer. Um, and um, basketball. We had all kinds of games, you know. In the summertime, they used to have a, a garden, and we sat out under the trees, and they had these enormous barrels, and they'd uh, planted cabbage, and we'd have to sit under the trees in the summertime and make crop, you know. We'd sit, sit there and make crop and then finally put them in jars and stuff like that. It used to be self-sufficient out there. Mm -hmm. They had green beans, they'd bring green beans and we'd snap green beans. Those of us that never had any place to go. You know. The best place in the world Grandpa could have picked. Really, really. I cried when I graduated from high school. That was the only home I knew. So every time anybody graduated, the home ec department would get uh, maids jobs in the cities like Tulsa and Oklahoma City. So they'd find a place for you to work. $3 to $3.50 a week. And that was a lot of money way back then. <laughs>